Since HTML is a node-based language where spacing and such doesn't really matter, you can have your ending tag on a completely different line and that's perfectly fine, parsing HTML with typical Unix-like tools such as sed and awk is a massive pain, and you probably shouldn't do it. So today we're looking at a tool called HTMLQ, which I guess is supposed to be short for HTML query. This is going to make the process considerably simpler, and rather than having its own weird custom syntax for doing selections, all of the selections are done through CSS selectors. Now you may know of another program called JQ. This is for working with JSON data, and HTMLQ actually lists JQ as one of its inspirations. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that unlike JQ, where you can go and parse and modify the data, currently in HTMLQ, you're only able to parse the data. Hopefully at some point that does go and change though. One thing to note is all the examples on the GitHub are taking information in from standard in. In their case, they're taking information from curl. We're just gonna cat a local file. This works perfectly fine, but you can also go and take in a file argument as well. That is done with the dash F option, or if you wanna use the full name option, then that is going to be file name and that's going to work exactly the same. Earlier I mentioned CSS selectors, so when you just pass in data without anything else to parse it, basically it has an implicit selector for the HTML tag. As we can see, that result is exactly the same. But obviously there's a lot more that can be done with this. So let's say you want to select part of a page. Let's say you want to select every single LI tag, for example. Or maybe you want to have something a little bit more complex and select, let's say, div, the child of that, and the child of that, which is a label. Now, obviously, in this case, you don't have to be that specific because, you know, there's only one label on the page. You could go and shorten that down to just selecting the label, but this isn't a CSS tutorial. This is just showing what the application can do. Or maybe you want to go and select something that has the attribute title, for example. I haven't run across any CSS that doesn't actually work. This isn't a library that was made specifically by the developer of this application. It's a library that had already existed. So it seems like everything should be good. I haven't tested every bit of CSS extensively, but I also haven't run across anything that doesn't work. Now, what if you don't want to select the nodes, but you instead want to select some data contained within those nodes? So one thing you might want to select is say the attributes. So that can be done by passing in the dash A argument, then you pass in the attribute you want to select. So let's say I want to select every single one of the titles. Now I'll get back to the CSS selector in just a bit. Doing this isn't going to work because in this case, there's no amount of implicit selection. The way that I would have made it work is if there's no selector there, then just go and implicitly pass in a star. This makes it so it's gonna grab every single one of the tags and check if any of them have a title. In this case, as we can see, we have three of them and that's what I'd like to see. But you don't just have to grab everything and in many cases you may not want to. So let's say I wanna grab every single one of the classes, but then I realize, wait, I don't actually need any of the classes that aren't on divs. So that would be this class right here. So we can go and say only select them from things that are divs. And now we just have these ones. And also nicely, it groups together any of the classes that come from the same element. So all of these ones right here were on this div right here. One thing to note is it doesn't seem like there's a way to select multiple attributes at once. For example, maybe having like a comma separated list or a space separated list or something like that. I haven't found any way that allows you to do that. So when you are selecting these attributes, you will have to do it one by one. It's not a big deal, but it is slightly a bummer. But I do think adding in a feature like that would be incredibly useful. For example, let's say you have these options here and you just wanna select the title and the value. And let's say they also have like an ID, a class and a bunch of other attributes on them as well. But you only care about these two right here. As it stands, you'd have to go and grab those with two separate commands, but having one command would simplify your command chain. Now, besides selecting attributes, you may also want to go and select the text. That can be done with the dash T option. And one thing you'll notice is there's a lot of white space. So 
any of the tags that don't have any text in them, it's still going to print a line for them. Also, anything that's been indented is still going to be indented, so I'd recommend also passing in the dash W option to clear out any white space. For some reason, there is still white space at the bottom though, but... There's far less white space than there was before. Now, as with everything before, you can go and pass in a CSS selector as well. So let's go and select every single one of the options. And now we just have the text from those ones. It seems like it's putting white space after every single block that it selects. So if it grabs everything, it puts a white space at the bottom. But with each individual option, it adds white space for those. It's not a big deal. Actually, it might sort of ease the ability of parsing, but... I would prefer if it just had no white space altogether. Now there's also an option to do pretty printing, that is done with the dash dash pretty option. This isn't going to go and add some nice colouring to it, all that fun stuff. It's just going to go and format the text to make it so, you know, it's not an absolute mess like it was before. As we can see, it just sticks a bunch of stuff on one line because that's how the file actually looks. Now this is not intended by the developer, at least I don't think it is. But because HTML is based on SGML, and there are other languages also based on SGML, for example, XML, and there are languages based on HTML, technically, you can use HTMLQ for things that are not HTML. For example, with React, it uses a modified version of HTML. You can parse that perfectly fine. SVG files are just glorified XML files that use the instructions to go and draw stuff. And then an RSS feed is also XML. Now, none of these are perfectly supported. So any names for tags and attributes are flattened down into lowercase. So in React, it's very common to use camel case to name things. That's not a thing in HTML. So that's just all removed. It still works fine. You can select it fine, but you're going to see the names aren't exactly the way you'd expect them to be. Also, XML makes use of a symbol that isn't used inside of HTML, at least in the names for attributes. That being the colon. So XML has this system known as Xlink. It doesn't really matter what Xlink can do. What matters is it uses a colon. So you might see something like Xlink colon href. And because there are no attributes in HTML that have a colon in them, there's no way to actually select that and trying to select it doesn't actually work. Now, obviously there are tools designed around parsing XML and a lot of them do the job really, really well. But I think it would be a really, really interesting experiment to make this a more general tool. Keep the whole CSS selector vibe going, but make it work nicely with XML, make it work nicely with React code and anything else that uses SGML style tags. Obviously, it's not the best idea out there, but as a fun little project, I think it could be really cool. This is a Rust application, so for anyone who wants to try it out, it's available through Cargo. If you're on Arch Linux, it is on the AUR, it is not listed on the GitHub page. And then over on macOS, Homebrew is also available. So that's going to be pretty much it for me. Let me know your thoughts on the application in the comment section down below. Is this something you would ever actually use? Or are you just watching to the end of the video to give me more engagement? I would love to know. And if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the Pay linked in the description down below. So that's going to be it for me. And I'm out. <laughs>